And let's do copy it. I guess we don't need a copy yet. So this means we're going to have an R on the left of a turnstile and a P or Q on the right of a turnstile. Now I've got to put a P on one of these two as a premise and an R on one of these two as a conclusion. So again, I'm just pattern matching. That one's done. And now I need to prove P or Q from P. Quick check. Does that sound like a reasonable thing to prove? You want to always make sure that you try to prove possible things. You don't have anything missing. So from P to P or Q, there's two moves we can do now. We can just do disjunction on the right. And if you do that, you're going to get P, therefore P comma Q. That's disjunction on the right. And now you're stuck. You can't go forward from there. You can only get rid of P, therefore P. You can't get rid of P, therefore, eh, maybe this, maybe that. So you're stuck. So the other thing we can do is like we had conjunction where we got to choose which thing we wanted to keep. We have disjunction where we get to choose which bit we keep. Which of course is our standard disjunction introduction rule from natural deduction. Sorry, is that you know on the you know on the first line at the bottom? Yes, yeah, so that's P P comma open bracket P bell Q close bracket arrow R T oh. for R. My handwriting is terrible. Yeah. It's question seven eighteen. So instead you will use this junction rule one. We decide to keep one of the disjuncts. So that says, if from some stuff you can prove P, then from some stuff you can prove P or Q. So that's just a distinction and production. And of course, that some stuff at the top just says from P you can prove P, and we believe that. <coughs> so we had a disjunction and production, uh, just a uh, disjunction on the right, which behaved a bit like a disjunction and production. We had an arrow to split things. It's a two-line proof, it's not too bad. Ooh, this one looks a little more fun. Fun is good, right? Number 19. We're just getting used to this by practicing our rules and learning how to read the rules in our rule sheets so we can apply them. So, R implies Q and Q, Q implies P, therefore P for Q and R. Now, we've got a problem, or at least we've got a choice. We can break down this conjunct on the left, we can break down this arrow on the left, we can break down this disjunction on the right. Yeah, any of them are okay. If we break down the, the arrow on the left, that will branch to two different um, inferences. So we would only do that if one of those inferences would instantly close, and making our problem simpler. And I don't think that would instantly close, we don't have to have a Q to match on here, or a P to match on. So let's not do that. We can do this, they're just put a comma in places. We can do this, but we don't know whether we're supposed to be keeping one side or the other, or both sides. So it's a bit of a choice thing there. The choice thing here, because maybe we want to get rid of one of these. We have to make a decision. Let's not do the arrow and split the problem. If in doubt, I just like to put commas here, because it gives me more options. And at worst, if I decide later on that I only want the conjunction where I get one side, I can just cross something out. We've got one of the conjunction on the left. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of arrows on the left. I've got two arrows on the left I could use, each of which would split our argument, and we've got a, a disjunction on the right. Now, I think I can safely do one of these arrows, so I'm going to do that. I think I can do that and just simplify things. If I break down this arrow, that will put an, a Q on the, as a conclusion. I can just put this Q premise next to it, and stuff will go away. Waving hands. I'm hoping to get rid of the cues. I'm going to try to break down this one and hope. 
this Q goes on the right hand side of something, this P goes on the left hand side of something. I put, I can now choose where everything else goes. So this one is a conclusion I'll put up here because we don't have a conclusion. This Q I'm going to put up here as a premise. This over here I'm going to put over here. This closes off. So this one here looks like a real mess. From P and R implies Q, I'm getting that. Yeah. And that doesn't seem so good. So has something gone wrong? Maybe. So here I've got an arrow over here or a disjunction over here. Oh, what did I do? I broke down an arrow on the left. So I'm just talking through the decisions I'm making and why. So if I broke down this, I'd have an R on the right hand side and nothing that would be a, a, an R on the left to match it. I'd also have a Q on the on the as a premise, maybe it would go with here. But I had this, that would become a conclusion with nothing to do with it, so that's bad. Whatever I do now, at some point if I break on this arrow, I'm going to get in trouble. So maybe I've gone completely wrong. Now over here, can I prove Q and R? Well, I guess if I had an R, then one, I'd have an R, but two, that'd give me a Q. If I had two R's, one to put here, and one to put in here to get my Q, I could get Q, or Q and R. So maybe that would help, but I needed an extra two R's from somewhere, and I've never had an R. Here, I've got a P, from the P I can get P or anything. So maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe I had this P, and P or anything, and it just becomes P, like we did last time. I just need to get rid of this. So where did that come from? That came from here, that came from here. So this conjunction here, if rather than breaking them two, I just get one of them and chuck the other one away. I wouldn't have this, I wouldn't have that, I wouldn't have that. I just have P, therefore P or something. So I'm just trying to fix it. Follow the rules so you get stuck and then you go back and try to trace it. So you say, right, if I don't have this, I'm happier, which means that one came from here. This bit of conjunction on the left, and I'm only keeping this bit of it. That was conjunction two on the left, and I'm chucking that one away. So I've got rid of this bit I didn't know what to do with. Now I've got P, therefore P or some crap. I'm going to get rid of this disjunction on the right by only keeping the first part of it, because I don't want that crap. And now I have P, therefore P. Now, how do you see that? Practice, or more accurately, pain and suffering. That's what practice is, right? So I went till I got stuck, and I kind of wiggled around using my knowledge of classical logic, but 